we are back, man. That's why, uh, Doc. I can't wait until we have. We're on uh, reality <laughs> TV, man. That's yeah, little, the BTS, little black radio stations. So all the things yeah. on air and off air, man. That make just what we do interesting. Yeah. So, Butchie Beverly, you talked about it years ago. If you're out there in the, in the film industry, man. Yeah, come. Let's start that. Let's put it on Bravo or VH. <laughs> <laughs> One WBOK little black radio station on Xavier's campus, right? Yes. Hey, nobody that we're talking about uh, uh, being on Xavier's campus, man. We are right now here with the CEO and boss lady, everything. Lona Edwards Hankins, uh, 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 Alona Edwards. It is to have here, Lona, but I usually. I don't know. There's a Hankins in yeah, there. There's a Hankins which, in there. I don't know which one you Put want some to respect go by, on that but name. we'll say Lona Edwards Hankins, mm-hmm. uh, CEO of RTA. Welcome back to the Good Morning Show. Good morning, OT. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. So we'll start off with, uh, man, after a, a busy weekend with so much going on. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good. I actually family's rested. Good? I read this okay. weekend. Yeah, I'm, family's well. All right. All right. Well, well, that's, uh, well, we're jealous you got a chance to do that. <laughs> Dr. Wyatt was tearing it up for her birthday, and I was ripping it up because it was her birthday. And, yeah. And, and any other reason. And all the, all the events. And all the, any yes. other reason I could uh, uh, find. So uh, uh, so to talk to us about uh, uh, RTA, man, uh, uh, 21 new fix, uh, uh, routed, route, uh, bus routes? Or yeah, route? we got 21 new buses. 21 new buses. Yeah, 15 okay. of them are hybrid. Mm-hmm. And the other uh, seven are diesel. Right. Yeah. So so, so, so explain to, to folk, hybrid, diesel, regular gas. Well, these are hybrid electri- uh-huh. electric, so they're diesel electric, and they're super quiet. Because, see, somebody, one time I was telling somebody about a hybrid, and they said, hybrid, do it fly? I said, no, hybrid, not hybrid, mm-hmm. right? So. So once Break it, it down. Once it gets up to a certain mileage, <laughs> the electrical kicks in, the uh-huh. electrical portion it's not an engine the electrical portion it kicks in and it becomes s- super quiet um and we can uh geofence to make sure we're monitoring um when the electrical comes in once it hits you know but like one of the challenges we have is uh emissions right and emissions causes asthma causes Kids we want not the air to, to be attend, cleaner. Absolutely. attend schools, Absolutely. Like our, our, our adults not to attend their workplace. But in certain neighborhoods and in certain, um, uh, uh, we can program them to such that it will automatically kick in to the electrical capacity once it gets to those neighborhoods. Okay. So the 21 new buses, does the eight more is in addition to those 21? Yeah. So we almost have 29 new buses yes. by January of 2025. Yes. yes. That's amazing. Yes. That is amazing. And then right now we have 16 of the 21 new buses already in in in, in rotation. That's right. They're on the street. Yeah. That's, that's amazing because if there are more buses on the street, that means there's better service frequencies happening. We're making our times, right? That's correct. So yeah. you guys remember back in January, we cut service because we were just um, our reliability was not where we wanted it to be. So now we're able to increase frequency on a few of our routes starting yesterday. Um, and then uh, eventually we'll be able to, once in January, we're looking to increase frequencies in more routes. We wanted to make sure, because they are, these are new vehicles, our, we gave our maintenance guys time to get trained on them so that we didn't, we didn't in initially put all increase the frequency on every line and put a burden on our maintenance folks. Right. But also, too, I think this is something that's going to make Oliver pretty happy and the students at UNOS. So, you know, talk to us about the 66 Hane Loop. So the 66, remember the Seabrook Bridge was out of yes. <clears throat> commission. Every time, the same time of year. And, you know, and, 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 and for a uh, uh, disclaimer, the Seabrook Bridge, not a city bridge. It's a state bridge. State officials, state elected officials, control what happens at that bridge. Haynes is a state thoroughfare. So, you know, I know folk, you know, the, the city council, the mayor, local, the school board members have no control over that bridge. It is a state entity. Correct. And DOTD with um, minimal notice, right, to both the RTA and our citizens um, had to take it out of service because of it did not, the bridge didn't pass uh, inspection, right? So it's been out of service and so that that it's route, back open now. It's back open now. Right. For, right? For, for, for now. Yeah. 
It's back open now. And so we are looking to resume service to UNO, to us, uh, SUNO in a proper way. Well, I mean, I think that's exciting, especially, like I said, for the students of UNO and SUNO, because the large population of this city, we don't have the luxury of vehicles. So we rely on city transportation. So I knew he was going to be excited about the hanging. Absolutely. I know I'm excited about the hanging. No doubt. And the fact that we could just be more consistent with service and to your credit, I'm hearing that in 2024, there was a big initiative and a big push to stay the ship at RTA. And a lot of people who work there with you, they give, they pay homage to your leadership for trying to right this ship and making certain that RTA is efficient. RTA um, has good stock on the street because we want our people to be safe. And I don't think people think about all that goes into making certain that it's not only running but that it's appropriately running and to the safety of the community. challenges trying to do all that. Yeah. Yeah, and we really focused on investing in our people. So yeah. um, we put a large amount of budget in our uh, for our maintenance workforce to retrain them. We're doing a lot of leadership development. Um, the team at the RTA really enjoys serving the city of New Orleans, so leading them is easy. Yeah. It's just really just pointing them in the right direction and, and asking them the right questions so that we can solve the problem and not just put a Band-Aid on the problem. So that's that's our goal now is to how do we get to the root cause, solve it. Is it a work process issue? Is it a finance issue? Is it a people skill issue? How do we get our city to the our, our agency to the point where we can deliver the service that our city deserves. Uh, paratransit is also extremely important. Talk about uh, that effort and that part of RTA and, and why not only is it necessary, but it's important to improve. So paratransit is another area that we're really focused on. Um, we are uh, got 13 vehicles coming in December and another 12 coming in the first quarter of 2025. Um, we are have an RFP out on the street or shortly out on the street to change our scheduling system. The, ske- the system we use to schedule um, has not been updated t- since 2017 mm-hmm. or 18. So you know software updates it changes. It all the yes. time. Mm-hmm. And so we just hadn't kept up with the time. So we're looking to um, get a new, easier, user-friendly software that would also allow us to schedule more efficiently so we can reduce the wait times at paratransit. And that is a critical service. Um, not only do people go to medical, but the people who are um, differently able yes. need autonomy as well and need to be able to go where they want so, to go. So let's say the, the paratransit transit system... Uh, uh, left a lot to be desired, and, and, and how do I know? Because of my sister. Uh, and so for decades, um, my mother didn't drive when my father was out, so uh, or wor- uh, worked. So w- especially after she retired, then paratransit was what um, uh, she relied upon to come pick uh, my handicapped, si- my disabled sister up, and it would be a challenge uh, sometimes. It, it, so, it still is a challenge, Oliver. If I'm, I'm honest. We're focused on customer service, um, focused on making sure we are scheduling people. And if we mess up, how do we go back and say, look, I was supposed to pick you up at 10. I'm sorry. I know I messed up. Like, how do we fix and repair? And then give people a heads up in advance if I'm going to be late. Because you have a life. Well, the educator in me is excited not only about the paratransit because, you know, I, I'm certified to teach and lead kids who have exceptionality. So I'm always thinking of ways to accommodate them and make certain that they feel a part of the populace. But see this opportunity pass zero fare pilot program. I'm excited about that. Let's talk about that for our kids and the young adults who are 16 to 24 years old. I'm pretty excited about that. And with the help of the city council and the mayor, we were able to get two point five million dollars in ARPA dollars. And um, our uh, RIDE, the advocacy group for public transportation, is a partner. The New Orleans Public Library is a partner. Um, The Youth Planning Board, they have a different acronym. I'm I'm screwing that up. But they are part of it. And so this process is that any young person between 16 and 24 can go to the public library to register. And when they register, they then get every day a day pass. And so they can ride anywhere, wherever they need to go, um, free, no cost to them, but they have to register. And so it's a one-year pilot that we're trying to figure out, like track data, to see that it works. 
um, and to benefit our, our young people. One of the young ladies said, you know, often she's um, um, scraping between her couch to find the, the car fare to go wherever she wants to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but not only just to get to work, right? Our young people need to experience some joy as well. So let, let them to be able to go where they want to go. So just for clarity, are they registering every day to get the pass every day? No, or? They, they register at the library. Okay. They have to download the app. And once they register at the library and download the app, every day the pass will show up in that gotcha. app. So there's one registration. One registration. But they can get a pass every day. That's a, that's. I believe it's just so wonderful. Like just to know you have a reliable transport yeah. Yeah. every Seriously. single day. If you're 16 to 24, you could get to that work. You know that work study job or that internship or the work. Yeah, you can get to school, so it makes it just easier. You could take that load off of your your back. So that's a wonderful initiative. So let's talk about bus service and transportation. Uh, you, you know, tracking from Ronald Reagan to now, uh, a lot of the federal investment of uh, uh, money that used to come to local communities, uh, especially in this area and and, and others, uh, gosh, has has gone away uh, for the last several decades. We know that in cities like New Orleans, we didn't need Katrina to tell us that, uh, you know, a, a, about a third or a little less of our population used public transit. We already knew that because right. we were from here. Where does the subsidy come from, right? Because I think too often uh, people forget that you guys have to pay for this service. It takes money to maintain this service. And it's not what we want here. It's what we need as well as with some of the shiny things that people want. Where, where is that, where's that money coming from, and how do we balance that agency so they can stay afloat as well as maintain the fleet? So the federal government is good about giving us grants to buy new things, right? And they give us a little bit of money based on our ridership mm-hmm. to maintain some things. Our operating budget comes from sales taxes here in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. The state of Louisiana gives us minimal amount. The state of Louisiana um, is 46 in the country in funding uh, public transportation. Well, public transportation and access to get around this state, I think, is one uh, uh, based on our infrastructure and how people get around is been, for decades has been rated F. Right, right. And so... Um, when people want more service, the more service is going to cost more money. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're, we're balancing that. We're, we're, we're struggling right now because we don't have a permanent funding stream for the Algiers Ferry Terminal. I mean, for the Algiers Ferry. If you remember, the Algiers Ferry was funded back um, by the toll tags when they took the toll tags oh. off. The funding, what do we? There's no funding source. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, this Opportunity Youth is a one-year pilot. When it goes away, that that opportunity goes away. Right. So how do we how do we sustain it? We're going to have to work with the city and our stakeholders to figure out how to sustain and and improve service. So that brings me to uh, you, you, you know we talk a little bit about what the, the was. Uh, you, you you're briefing us on the is and uh, the to come. Uh, You've been in this business long enough to know now the future of public transportation, uh, the, the challenges, uh, the opportunities. What does what does Lona Hankins see? So let's talk about the opportunities, right? Um, I'm looking forward when our infrastructure is much better. The downtown transit center, we do have funding to build that, and that and and so that our people who have normally stood outside the Kraus Building. Mm-hmm can now come inside. Mm -hmm. Um, We are actively in design on the Algiers Ferry Terminal. We had federal funding for that. Um, Bus rapid transit excites me to be able to get from New Orleans East to downtown. The mayor talked about a logistics center or or a transportation center in the east. At at one point they were talking about the old, uh, uh, some portion of the old plaza site. Uh, somewhere around 610 near the, the Bayou Phoenix, a former Six Flags site. Uh, she's mentioned that. But where is that now? In, in our heads, an idea, a dream. But if you think about places like Atlanta that have the rail system, mm-hmm. um, they call it um, transit-oriented communities, where at that rail stop you now then have um, – 
businesses. The business is not there. You have a whole housing development. You have a shopping mall. Mm-hmm. All of that around. Think a town center, right? And I envision that at a site in New Orleans East. Mm-hmm. Now, what site? We got to find the money. Got to find the site that's easy, accessible on the line. You know, that old plaza site would be a beautiful site for that. Can we can we acquire it? We have to work through the logistics to acquire it. And I know that one is complicated. Well, I believe we are moving in direction in terms of RT. And hopefully this one-year pilot program will encourage more of our youth to have an intimate relationship with our RTA services and we want to grow ridership because you say federal money comes based on our ridership. Yep. So if we could grow ridership, we grow dollars so that we can help fund some of these lofty ideals that we have to improve our, our transportation systems here. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, public transit can be the solution, right? You tell me a problem, how we can be a part of the solution. That, that opportunity youth, that young person who's making the decision, do I lay in bed or do I get up and go to school? If I got if my my transit is reliable, I've re- I've re- removed one excuse from them. Um, that mother who's struggling to work two jobs because she has to pay for the twenty twenty dollars an hour right to to pay for apartment. Um, if we can get her reliable transportation to her job, maybe she gets a raise. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because that's the difference. A lot of the time, there's just not the access to the the resource that is most needed. If somebody's car goes out here, they need to be able to rely on public transportation to keep the money coming in, to keep the lights on. So it's almost like a domino effect. So if our public transit works, then we know we have a populace of people who can depend on that service. Yeah. And they can get where they need to go to make the money they need to make to stay afloat. And and even, you know, those of us who don't rely on public transportation, right? Imagine what your commute could look like if you could um, hop in in the car and as you get into New Orleans East or hop on the bus as you get into New Orleans East and just relax for those 30 minutes or read a book or catch up on your emails. Right. So that you can multitask when you're on the, on the public transportation. And speaking of the emissions, because that's the number one thing that I see in cities that have the rail service, even people who have cars are not on the road in their cars. They're parking and they're jumping on the rail system. So it just the, the air is cleaner, the streets are less congested. It, it's all it all works hand in hand. Yes. Oh, we're talking to Lona Hankins, the CEO, and uh, I guess all around just boss lady of the RTA, the Regional Transit System. Uh, regional Transit. It seems like thanks today there's a little bit more regional than it has been, but still quite different from what regional or metro area transit is in other areas. Why? Part of it is, I guess, the originating um, legislation, the enabling legislation allowed um, our regional parishes to opt in or opt out, and most of them opted out. Um, We are more... Let people know what they opted out of. So they opted out of of paying into the RTA to join us and for, for us to provide them service, the public transportation service. So Jefferson has their own public transportation service. St. Bernard has its own. Now we are servicing into those communities. Mm-hmm. We can be better in, at coordinating schedules and we're working towards that. Um, so that if you get off the bus at Elmwood, you can then catch the Jefferson transportation local bus Right. Um, and so that we're working on that. Um, but the 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 reasons why I'd have to be the, the historian to tell you why my goal is to make us gr- so great that folks start wanting to opt in. Uh, we're going to break. And when we come back, uh, uh, we're going to continue this discussion with uh, Miss uh, Lona Hankton. Right, Hankins. Uh, Hankins. Lona yeah, her, Edwards. Yeah, her, Hankins. Lona Edwards. I, I know the Edwards. Everybody <laughs> know the Edwards. That's how where we where we grew up, right? In Big Chief Dial. But hey, we'll be back uh, after uh, the break.
week. Oh, we are back. 48 minutes past the top of the hour. We're back to our discussion with uh, Lana Edwards Hankins, right? Uh, if you're not familiar with the Edwards family, man, the Edwards uh, family is one of the, uh, we talk about African American entrepreneurs, uh, business people, and culture. Uh, one of the leading families in this community. So she's uh, more than just CEO, uh, executive, public servant, and CEO and leader of the uh, Aura. T A. So, uh, how do you envision public transit? Uh, you know, we got about eight minutes left. Public transit moving forward. What should the citizens know and be aware of? No, we actually got no. Let me let's go to the lines right now. Line number one, Miss Armtrees. You're on with Miss uh, Edwards Hankins. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning. We're doing you know good. What I- <laughs> we doing good. Jared's doing good in that too. Oh, okay. Jared on Jared on the box, yeah. Go ahead. Go Jared ahead. Go ahead, Miss Audrey. Listen, I just wanted to call and, you know, just uh compliment Miss Lona for how, you know, whatever great job she's doing over there. Because at the end of the day, New Orleans has all for the most part has always been a town that um, you know, relied on their public transportation. Growing up, nobody on my yep. block, including my family, had a car. Yep. The bus was how we got around. That's the right. bus is how I learned the city. And even to this day, sometimes I park my car mm-hmm. and just get on a bus. You know, I'll pick a bus that day and get on so I can still kind of see what the city is looking like. So, you know, that old time feeling. And I just think, you know, if we can get back to that place, the way car insurance is hitting, you know, and people could get to a place where they feel public transportation is a very, is a, you know, a source that can really help their family because the way, like I said, car insurance is killing people. So I'm sure people would love to be able to get rid of that great expense point. if we could count on transportation again. Wow, and just one point. last point, the uniqueness of the street cars, I'm not sure if they already have this, but is there an opportunity to connect with Delgado or one of the community colleges or trade schools so that we can kind of get our young people involved early in figuring out how to be the next generation of mechanics for our streetcars. Well, you must be you must be reading Miss Hankins' mind. Uh, great, great questions, Miss Armstrong. I mean, you know, you know great what? Question. That's my. We always have that same right. mind together, and I love that. That's why I was so happy. When Absolutely. I That's before, the before, position she's before, in. Thank you, Miss Armstrong. Before we get to the next caller, because what I do know is that man, you've been out there beating the drums, right? There's such major opportunity uh, in terms of skilled labor to deal with streetcars and some of that stuff. But answer our question. So as it relates to the streetcar, we are rebuilding the apprentice program. In fact, there's an apprentice uh, position, um, open right now. Um, our streetcars, we just celebrated a hundred years anniversary. Um, we have been bringing young people through, uh, and doing tours with them so that they can, be interested. So, My son and I went on one of your tours. Right. Yeah. So we did a general tour to the public. STEM NOLA, we had their fellowships, fellows come, high school fellows come spend some time with us. Um, the New Orleans Career Center, they're always touring us. Um, we have a partnership, a budding partnership with the 1881 Institute to help um, with us with some curriculum. And we're rebuilding the program um, with Delgado to provide us with some level of skills. And, and talk about the level of opportunity financially there, because that's what I th- don't think people understand. They, they, hey, hey, if you know how to work on those three cars, man, yeah. ooh, and they make their own stuff, get money and money. Yeah. This, the street car, it's a preservation facility. That's what I've coined it. I don't know if that exists. It's mm-hmm. a manufacturing. It exists now. <laughs> it's yeah. a it's not a manufacturing because we don't manufacture the streetcars, mm-hmm. but every part sometimes we are manufacturing. Um, uh, so the opportunity, you know, easily six sixty thousand dollars a year. Oh, minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of those guys make way more. Than well, that's that. what Amtrice was talking about—the yeah. uniqueness of it. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to lines. Yeah. Uh, Pop Jones, Pop West Bank Pop. What's up? The first, all right. First Thank dude you very much for taking my call. Hey, absolutely, go ahead, uh, Pop. You know I'm not the sharpest knife in the draw. Yeah, but you're pointy. But uh, I uh, would like to compare maybe New Orleans to Chicago. I know Chicago. What is the third largest city? Yep, yeah, say something like that. Yeah, uh, uh, New yeah, York, and, LA, uh, Chicago, Chicago. For uh-huh. years, have had Amtrak. 
uh, have had trains all through the city. The L system. For years. And they still have a problem, but, but, but you couldn't compare it because it's such a large city. But we, we, we kind of late with that. I think we could have we could have did something with that a long time ago because they have a train. I look at the train running, coming from the they have a train that trains that run Amtrak that for the people that live in the suburbs, drop them off where they park their cars and catch the Amtrak, and then go home. And then they have they have trains running all through the city. So it looks like we we a little bit late with that, huh? Thank you. Thank you, Pop. We'll let her answer the question. So, yes, and, and we have moved away from, the industry has moved away from um, light rail mm-hmm. and moved more to bus rapid mm-hmm. transit, yeah. right, which is the uh, the entity that I was talking about, the system that I was talking about mm-hmm. earlier. And bus rapid transit, rather than stopping every two blocks, you may only stop every mile, right? right? So you can move quicker, and it has level boarding. It feels like a train, um, and so that's where we're headed. Wow, let's go to line number one. We only have a few, we only have a few minutes left, Mister Don. You're on with uh, uh, the boss lady over at the RTA. Good morning to the boss lady. I grew up around the bus ball, street car bus ball. I, I mean, but anyway, my dad say those guys that build the uh, new street cars, they don't buy a soft drink in. Orleans Parish. They take their money out to where they live. But anyway, let me ask you, New Orleans has been one of the most walkable cities, along with San Francisco, Boston, Massachusetts, New York City. Um, In downtown. And should we be focusing on just reducing the cars? Because most of the cars have only one person in it, and that's a driver, and the four or six Six passenger Get to vehicles. your question, Don, because it produ- the producer going to cut us off. Should we look yeah. at trying to be in a walkable city to pedestrian traffic and bicycle? Great question. Bicycle lanes are mandatory. How do we correlate and uh, uh, join with the pedestrian and bicycle, non-motorist uh, community to enhance it? And I think parking rides is what's needed in maybe the East and Great the question. West Bank. Uh, to job centers. Thank you, Don. Livable community. Livable communities. And how do we make it safe for pedestrians, mm-hmm. right? So we're working with the city on their complete streets program. Our teams are planning in, in conjunction. And it, that livable city is just that. So folks can um, hop on the, on the bus, put their bikes on the bike racks, and um, have a really safe uh, experience. When it's safe for pedestrians, it's safe for our bus riders. But that also goes back to the comment you made about lowering the emissions that's out there. Yes. Because if we have less cars on the road, less people taking their own personal cars and more of them taking the public transportation, maybe that will help our air become cleaner. Yes. Yes. So it's also about saving the earth, Oliver, saving the planet. It, 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 look, guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm, look, look, you know, we have our, our television following the world and national news on <laughs> and the Trumpy Trout, the Trumpy Trout commercial. Came on right behind Miss Hanks as we talk. We serious, here seriously talking about <laughs> transportation with the leading lady of transportation here in our region in the state. And I had never seen this Trumpy Trout commercial. But I'm not going to drag you into the political discussion. In uh, 30 seconds or less, uh, 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 close us out with our listening audience. We started a new campaign earlier this year. Um, Tank is on it um, uh Many many of New Orleans legends are on it, mm-hmm. and it ends with "This is how we roll," mm-hmm. right? So New Orleans, we are rolling into the future, and we're rolling into the now. Hey, you promise to come back and share with us? Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, man. thank you for your leadership. There's no doubt about it, man. WBOK twelve thirty a.m. What New Orleans is talking about? about it. And whose station? Our station. You know, it's still your station. We'll be back after the break.